Good evening, everyone. I'm Laura Ingram. This is the Ingram Angle from Washington tonight. An unstoppable force. That's the focus of tonight's angle. Well, respected polling analyst tonight, Nate Silver, has Trump now with a 55% chance of winning the election. Harris is now down to 44.6%. I want to be clear, this is still anyone's race, but if the Trump momentum holds and he wins the presidency a week from tomorrow, there are four events that I believe will be remembered as pivotal. First, the VP debate, where Vance trounced Walls. You yourself just said Iran is as close to a nuclear weapon today as they have ever been. And Governor Waltz, you blame Donald Trump. Who has been the vice president for the last three and a half years? And the answer is your running mate, not mine. Second, Trump's return to Butler. A very big thank you to Pennsylvania. We love Pennsylvania. And as I was saying... Third, Trump working at McDonald's. Keep it tight. We got the salt on it. Never touches the human hand. It's going to be the best you ever. I made it myself. I have worked at McDonald's. I've now worked for 15 minutes more than Kamala. It requires great expertise, actually. And fourth, the capper, the pack show at Madison Square Garden. For the past nine years, we have been fighting against the most sinister and corrupt forces on Earth. With your vote in this election, you can show them once and for all that this nation does not belong to them. This nation belongs to you. It belongs to you. Well, I was there, and the message was hopeful, optimistic, and Reagan-esque. Thousands and thousands waited in line for 12 hours to get in. The crowd was patriotic. It was happy. Diverse, young, old, independents, Republicans, of course, different races and ethnicities. They shared a faith that Donald Trump can deliver on bringing a new golden age to the country they all love. We will have the strongest economy, the most secure borders, the safest cities, the most powerful military, the best trade deals, and we will dominate the frontiers of science, medicine, business, technology, and space. And I'm asking you to be excited about the future of our country again. I'm asking you to dream big again. This will be America's new golden age. I love that line, the new golden age. Yes, we need that in America. Now, I've been covering these types of rallies since 2015. And the coalition of, has grown. The people that the MAGA movement gained along the way, these are significant people. And it tells us a lot about why this matters, why it's working. RFK Jr., Tulsi Gabbard, Elon Musk, Vivek Ramaswamy, and countless regular folks who've given Trump's pragmatic populism another look. Because they all came to see what we've known for years, that the old Washington establishment has failed us in every way. It's failed us at home. It's failed us abroad, in politics, and the culture. But voters are recognizing that just because they failed, it doesn't mean America has to fail, because America can be renewed. We're for everyone, if you're an American. We're building the biggest, broadest, most diverse coalition in American history, including union workers and Border Patrol agents. We're seeing historic levels of support among our black population, Hispanic population, and our Asian population, Jews and Muslims and Catholics and evangelicals and Mormons, and they're all joining our cause in large numbers, larger than anyone has ever seen in this country before. And the Republican Party has really become the party of inclusion. The party of inclusion. Take their language recapture it as your own, because that's the truth. They're exclusionary. They're intolerant. We want everyone to be better, stronger, more prosperous, and safer. It doesn't matter where you came from. doesn't matter what you know, color your skin is. That's what we believe. So the atmosphere in that arena was electric. It was on fire. And it was overwhelmingly optimistic. I kept thinking as I was watching, you know, what other politician in America could gather such a crowd? 
Madison Square Garden was packed. Uh, people waited hours to get in. They sat through hour after hour of this rally. They were fervent in their devotion to all things Trump. Trump has created a movement. There is no doubt. I cannot think of another Republican figure of my lifetime who could have come into a Democratic city like New York and put together anything like that. Okay, they've been trashing him all day for saying that. That's true. That's obvious. Everyone who's honest today would be saying the same thing. There is no one else who could have done it. They wouldn't even try to do it. And the night was a celebration of American freedom, probably above all else. But there, of course, there are others who truly believe that you can't be a good person or a moral person if you believe that we need to take care of American needs and American problems first. This is called normalization. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the descent into fascism, if we so choose. I come with such dire warnings, and I mean them from the bottom of my heart as a daughter of mm. refugees who came here escaping war. It was everything that you need to know about Donald Trump mm -hmm. in one uh, weird white nationalist <laughs> Nazi type rally. And of course, there's historic parallels to where and when this happened. I love the Nazi stuff. I mean, there's so many Jewish Americans there, Jewish flags there, there were Muslims there. I don't know what she's watching or was she watching? Because the parallels to last night, and I wrote about this on foxnews.com, you could check it out there. I'll also post it later. JFK's rally there in 1962, or FDR's re-election rally in 1936, exactly 88 years ago on Thursday. Look, no one with a brain who's, who's really being honest with themselves believes that Donald Trump or his supporters are fascists. And frankly, when you're playing that card, you have no vision, you have no record, and you have no plan to make America better for working people. You're just out of gas and you're out of ideas. All you have are lies and smears. And the woman with truly zero principles who's claimed all along, oh, I'm going to fight for working people. I used to tend bar. Remember that? But sold out to billionaires back in Harris. She's also out of ideas. This was a hate rally. They are inciting <clears throat> violence and hatred against Latinos, against black Americans, against Americans who don't have children. The only reason that the rhetoric has gotten this far is precisely because they are trying to prime the kind of froth that led up to the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Oh my God, stuck on stupid, stuck on January 6th. That's the banner. Now how aggressively inane these people sound. Again, they have essentially given up on the American people. They've given up on our ideals and much of our tradition. They think it's wicked and evil. But Trump has not. He believes we should dream big. You deserve to dream big. You work hard. You want your kids to do well. And this is, of course, a quintessentially American impulse. It's also classic New York. No city embodies the spirit, energy, and potential of the American people more than where we are gathered tonight. We want to win our country, but we also want to win New York and make it safe and strong and beautiful and affordable and vibrant again. I love that. Put that on a hat. Make New York vibrant again. How about to not smell like pot either? Trump is just unabashedly pro-American. It's infectious. And his supporters are pro-American, too. And this drives the Democrats absolutely insane. Remember, these same people are triggered by too much flag flying. You know, after years of running our country into the ground, their only response to being called out for their lazy leadership, their lousy record, is Nazis and fascists. That's all they got. What pathetic and sad people they are. Now, remember, there is one supremely powerful dictatorship in the world today that really threatens us, and it's a CCP. So who do you think China hopes wins next week? Not Trump, because he kept them back on their heels, and they didn't like that at all. But they'd love a bumbler like Kamala in, and her new warmonger pal, Liz Cheney, because perpetual war means a weaker America, guaranteed. That's good for dictatorships. And I think more than anything, when I looked around that arena last night and talked to the people there, the firefighters and the police and just regular people from Connecticut or New Jersey, New York, some people came from further away, some from Manhattan, 
I think Americans just want a return to common sense. They want logic. They want clear solutions to obvious problems like we're out of money. We're $35 trillion in debt. The government, yeah, has to be reined in. All government spending is taxation. So whether it's, it's direct taxation or all government spending, it either becomes inflation or it's, it's direct taxation. Your money is being wasted, and the Department of Government Efficiency is going to fix that. We're going to get the government off your back and out of your pocketbook. Music to the ears of millions of Americans. A, a Department of Government Efficiency? Oh, I love it. Now, if families have to live on a budget, you know, why doesn't the government have to live on a budget? It, it kind of makes sense when you think about it. But compare the big thinking of Trump, Vance, and people like Musk to the small thinking of the man who ushered in near record inflation and a migrant invasion. It's simply embarrassing. It's beneath any president. But that's what we're getting used to. That's why the selection is so important. You know, most of the presidential scholars I've spoken to talk about the single most consequential thing about a president's character. Character. And uh, there's, uh, he puts that in question every time he opens it. All right, because Biden is a good one to talk about character. A man who helped his son make millions off his position and influence from a communist regime and a president whose open borders resulted in needless American death and suffering. Forget that hundreds of billions of dollars were out because of it. On November 5th, eight days from right now, this long campaign will finally end. So each of us must choose whether to join the hopeful and the optimistic movement that rallied in New York last night or whether to support the cynics and the liars who've given up on this country. If we make the right choice, yeah. We can save America. And that's the angle. Uh, your love keeps me going. <laughs> Happy Monday, everyone. Donald Trump <laughs> clapping for the day. It can't hear you. So Donald Trump held his rally last night at Madison Square Garden. Why on a Sunday? Well, unlike Democrats, they had to go to work on Monday. <laughs> MSNBC is getting called out for splicing in Nazi images to video of Sunday's Trump rally. They were also criticized for using clips from the Joker, but that turned out to be an unedited Kamala interview. <laughs> Comedian Tony Hinchcliffe is under fire for joking that Puerto Rico is a floating island of garbage, upsetting New Yorkers who said, I thought we were the floating island of garbage. <laughs> Yeah, get in line, Puerto Rico. <laughs> Trump said if he's reelected, he'll cover the costs of his administration's transition. Kamala responded, saying if he hires Venezuelan gang members, we'll also cover their transition. <laughs> in an appeal to young men, AOC and Tim Waltz played Madden yeah. football online this weekend. They would have played Call of Duty, but Waltz kept trying to run. <laughs> At one point. At one point, their stream had fewer than 10,000 viewers. <laughs> Hell, my stream beats that, and that's when I write my name in the snow. <laughs> yeah. A group supporting Kamala Harris released a bizarre ad showing a young man pleasuring himself while watching porn on his phone. Well, at least they finally found some guys who were pulling for Kamala. <laughs> And finally, a new study suggests that very masculine men are at a higher risk for having heart problems. They say the most masculine men... Ah! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. No acting classes. All right, so Trump is, by most accounts, leading in the polls. Suddenly, Hispanics are calling voting Republican mucho caliente, <laughs> which in English translates to very hot, or Greg Gutfeld. <laughs> the Jewish vote may go more Republican than any time since Ronald Reagan, which is weird since Trump is Hitler. Hmm. <laughs> African Americans are excited to vote for Trump, and not just this one. <laughs> 
<laughs> and a series of so-called conservatives have either been relegated to the nut house or revealed themselves as self-centered phonies. Exhibit A, the Washington Post conservative columnist Jennifer Rubin. Mm -hmm. Rubin's a longtime WAPO columnist who's claimed to be conservative for years. But even for years before, she was anything but. As a labor lawyer for decades, she was described as straight-ahead Hollywood lib. Still with great fanfare, the Post welcomed her aboard as their token righty. A female conservative. It was like finding a BLM member who's into Dave Matthews. <laughs> So here's this post vaunted conservative speaking on MSNBC. The person who is incoherent and unable to string together a sentence is not President Biden, it's former President Trump. We have an entire political party that is devoted to a criminal defendant, someone who tried to overthrow our democracy. We yes. have a party that has betrayed America. I think it's malpractice for the journalistic uh, troops not to begin asking questions about Trump's sanity, his mental and emotional status. He sounds nuts. Yep. She's a conservative, and I'm Lizzo's late night booty call. <laughs> Could be. Once again, the Donald Trump effect has exposed another lying fraud. Last week, Rubin took to her ex account to support LA Times editorial board members who resigned because that paper wouldn't endorse Kamala. Brava, Ruben writes in response to one woman quitting. That is courage, and shame on her boss for not joining her. Bravo, all respect, she says to another, and then added, where are the rest of them? Now, apparently, self-awareness is not Ruben's strong point, because literally, as Ruben was writing that, her own paper was also refusing to endorse Kamala while she was, while was still signing uh, Ruben's paychecks, which clearly she doesn't spend on hair and makeup. <laughs> but maybe she doesn't even read that rag, the one that she works and writes for. So now both the editorial board and its union members at WAPO revolted. But what of the revolting Rubin, who shamed LA Times writers for not quitting? Where is her own re resignation letter, you googly-eyed snaggleface? <laughs> or does playing fake conservative pay too well? But hey, if you resigned, I'm sure there's room for you at the oats-filled trough at The View. <laughs> but we know she won't. This woman is about as authentic as the meat at Arby's. <laughs> but it's not just about Ruben, who in truth really doesn't matter. Fact is, Trump is forcing all these people into showing who they really are. From fakes like Ruben to Democrat operatives at the LA Times and the Washington Post posing as journalists. It's like Trump flipped on the light in the kitchen at 2 in the morning, and all these cockroaches went scurrying every which way. Although over at CNN, Captain Poppin' Fresh pulls out, a new, <laughs> pulls out a new phrase. The overarching story here is about a concern that billionaires like Bezos might be rolling over and appeasing Donald Trump whether, even before uh, the election day actually rolls around. Uh, this is known uh, by some scholars as uh, anticipatory obedience the idea that some people obey in advance to curry favor with aspiring authoritarians. Hmm, somebody has Wikipedia. <laughs> Anticipatory obedience? Sounds like Stelter when he finds a Big Mac on the street. <laughs> Trump, you see, is like political truth serum. All those people who spent years saying their journalism is purely objective now come out enraged that their office didn't pick a side. But while all this nonsense was going on, Trump was working harder than Joy Behar's flea and tick collar. <laughs> Did a three-hour interview with Rogan on Friday. Just imagine either Joe or Kamala doing that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.